welcome back to an another video in the last video we studied about pollination and its types in this video we will study some more points on those uh, types of pollination in the last session we have discussed that pollination is either self pollination or cross pollination first we shall uh, see few more points on this uh, self pollination under the self pollination we studied uh, something called autogamy right so autogamy is a transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower is uh, what we call it a uh, autogamy so here in the case of autogamy there are uh, some advantages and there are some disadvantages at the same time the cross pollination do also have some uh, advantages and also have some uh, disadvantages so firstly we will study about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, autogamy okay right now <coughs> this autogamy is mostly seen mostly seen in bisexual flowers okay we know what actually the bisexual flowers okay so these bisexual flowers are the one okay that have both male and female reproductive okay organs so that have both male and female reproductive organs uh, we call them bisexual flowers of course to which uh, the reproductive organs in this case which includes the stamens and the pistils so the stamens we know they are male reproductive organs and pistils will consider as a female reproductive organs okay now in these uh, bisexual flowers okay when male and female reproductive organs okay come to maturity at the same time so when male and female reproductive organs come to maturity at the same time right so this will of course uh, uh, right in case of uh, a bisexual flower okay the condition is called homogamy the condition is called homogamy so in a bisexual flower when male and female reproductive organs come at the same time okay of uh, uh, maturity then the condition becomes uh, okay uh, the homogamy here and always this uh, homogamy favors self pollination it favors self pollination okay so the homogamy favors okay self pollination here right now let's see a few advantages of uh, self pollination and also a few points on disadvantages of the self pollination here okay so the advantages of self pollination advantages of self pollination so in, in the case of this advantages of self pollination first uh, point okay uh, as both male and female reproductive organs are present in the uh, same flower there is no need of an external agent and the pollination takes place okay uh, almost uh, right uh, for that it ensures the production of seeds so there is uh, as there is no external agent here compulsory i mean uh, almost 100 percent there is a chance of the pollen grains reaching the stigma as it is very close to uh, right uh, the anthers and the pollination obviously takes place and there will be seed set or the production of seeds obviously uh, it takes place here and 
again one more point is that okay there is little waste of pollen grains so here the pollen grains need not be carried to a very long distances okay so for that reason the pollen grains will not be wasted so in that process a lot of pollen grains will uh, get wasted and in this case the pollen grains will not get wasted so there is a little waste of uh, pollen grains in the case of uh, uh, self pollination here okay then the self pollination or self pollinating plants are genetically stable so the self pollinating plants are genetically stable so what and how these genetically stable we will discuss in the okay coming classes here okay and then the flowers need not develop okay so uh, there is no need to develop any uh, coloration or any kind of sense okay uh, right so for that uh, because uh, there is no need of attracting any external agent so flowers need not develop any devices to attract pollinators okay so these are few advantages of uh, self pollination here so i told you already uh, besides these advantages there are also disadvantages so uh, let's see okay the disadvantages of self pollination disadvantages of self pollination so in this case okay right uh, continuous okay self pollination results in the production of weaker progeny because there are no variations produced much okay uh, the progeny which is produced or the offspring which is produced will not be having much hybrid vigor okay so uh, they will be obviously uh, become weak in course of time as there is a continuous self pollination so continuous self pollination obviously results in the production of a weaker uh, progeny here okay then again there is no chance of okay or let's say there is no or little chance of evolution of a new species so evolution of a new species obviously results i mean obviously require uh, uh, the accumulation of various or different characters that in course of time may evolve into a new species and here the there will be no new characters that will build up in the generation by uh, generation so for that reason uh, there will be a no or little chance of evolution of a, a new species that uh, that will be seen in the case of self pollinating plants here okay so right <clears throat> this is uh, a few disadvantages of okay self pollination so we have both advantages as well as disadvantages of okay uh, self pollination so now coming to uh, the cross pollination already we have studied the cross pollination in case of cross pollination we have studied two different types right one is called dichnogamy and another one called xenogamy so let's see about that cross pollination so i have classified this cross pollination into two types okay one the dichnogamy and another one the xenogamy you have to keep in mind if you are considering genetically okay you can include the dichnogamy under autogamy 
or if you are considering functionality so this one is based on the functionality okay i am including the typhlogamy okay under cross pollination because i already mentioned that okay functionally gynogamy is okay cross pollination okay. the gynogamy is cross pollination so now we'll see here okay right uh, some examples in the last session we did not uh, men i did not mention examples of this gynogamy so you will see the gynogamy okay uh, right so here i'm considering only the functionality because of that i have included under the cross pollination so if you are considering it genetically then you can include under autogamy the examples for this uh, gynogamy include maize okay castor etc are some plants in which you will find okay uh, the gynogamy here clear this one and coming to the xenogamy in the case of xenogamy uh, right the pollen grains will get transferred from one plant okay that will be mostly a uh, unisexual plants like in case of date palms and papayas there are unisexual uh, plants uh, the uh, male plant will be producing only the flowers that will contain stamens so here in case of xenogamy so we will find okay male plants and these male plants will produce flowers with uh, only stamens okay so that's uh, the one here and uh, in case of uh, female plants the female plants will produce okay flowers with only pistils okay so so uh, the point here they are in unisexual flowers here so that's what i mentioned here so this is a, a unisexual flower and this is also a unisexual flower right and the fruits or the seeds will be produced only by the female plant here okay so the fruits okay and seeds are produced only on okay female plant so you don't see in the case of male plants so male plants will not show uh, presence of any fruits or seeds okay uh, these fruits and seeds will be seen only in the case of okay female plants so this uh, xenogamy you will see like in the case of uh, date palms okay then papaya etc uh, right are some examples of this okay xenogamy right so we have understood in the case of cross pollination a clear cut difference between the gynogamy and xenogamy in gynogamy the pollen grains will reach the stigma of an another flower which will be present on the same plant but in the case of uh, xenogamy right the pollen grains will reach to the stigma right which is present on another plant not on the same plant okay so this uh, the the two different types under the cross pollination we'll see uh, some advantages of this uh, cross pollination advantages of cross pollination advantages of cross pollination okay now the cross pollination induces okay genetic recombinations <coughs> So coming to the advantages of cross pollination so we uh, this cross pollination induces obviously the genetic recombinations and the cross pollination also increases better adaptability of offspring uh, to the changing environments here so uh, as the offspring are produced with uh, better characters they will have 
more chance of surviving under changing environmental conditions. Now, the defective characters, if there are any defective characters of the race, they will be eliminated and they will be replaced by some okay better characters. Okay. And the offspring produced will definitely have better characters, okay, uh, which I call them superior characters. Okay. So here this what I mentioned here, the superior characters when you compare with their parents. So these are some advantages of okay cross pollination. Now, in the same way, just like how we have seen in the case of uh, self pollination, the disadvantages, the, the cross pollination, okay, do have disadvantages. So disadvantages of cross pollination. Disadvantages of cross pollination. So let's see uh, in this here, right? In some cases, the very good characters, okay, of a right race may be lost. So how this happens? Uh, we will understand only in the coming classes, especially in the principles of inheritance and variations, we will have a better chance of understanding, uh, right? So how the sometimes the good characters are lost, especially in case of uh, right cross pollination. So in self pollination, uh, the good characters or whatever the characters the plants or the parents have will be preserved to the next generation, right? Then. <clears throat> some undesirable characters okay may creep in so uh, as the pollen come from different source okay that may carry some uh, you know what i call uh, uh, genetical uh, abnormalities or some other kind of uh, 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 heredity diseases and so and so can be transferred to the okay offspring so that's what some undesirable characters may also creep in. So this point also we'll understand in clear in the coming classes. So these are a few disadvantages of cross pollination. Okay. So we have seen advantages of cross pollination and also disadvantages of okay cross pollination.